college isn't for everybody, but for students who choose to go, where they come from can be a big predictor of their ability to overcome the many challenges of higher education. Rural students don't go to college in the same numbers that their urban or suburban peers do, particularly if they come from limited means. And for students of color, the numbers are even lower. And when it comes to persistence rates, that number that determines whether students will return for their second year of college, rural students struggle more than their peers. But there are many success stories, and we wanted to tell one. Since late spring, Education Week has traveled several times to the Jemez Pueblo, a native community of a few thousand in New Mexico, to get to know two students whose academic stories belie the statistics, not only of their rural peers, but also of their state, which ranks dead last in the nation on student achievement. Well, the Pueblo of Jemez here, as you know, is situated in a valley that leads up into the corridor and up to the Jemez Mountains. Our people have called this valley and this area home since the early 1300s. And so this is where we as a people are connected to our language, our lands, our culture, and our traditions. Back in 1999, the tribe began to initiate community visioning sessions. And the first one was to take ownership over the education systems of our young people, to build capacity uh, within our young people, to be able to res assume responsible leadership roles within our community. The tribe then instructed the uh, education department in 2001 to begin the development of a charter high school that was focused around language and culture-based education that looked at uh, college and career attainment and readiness as a priority. Today, the school serves grades 9 through 12 and has an enrollment of about 50 students, 98% of whom are Native. Every student at the school qualifies for free or reduced lunch. Test performance in reading and math is poor, but north of 80% of their students graduate, which is higher for Native and rural students both nationally and in the state. <laughs> there was a time that, that in our Native schools and Native people, uh, we had to choose, you know, you choose your language, culture, or education forced, and that's not, that's not uh, the way anymore. We offer um, workshops for kids about how to balance those traditional obligations and school or career. Your parents want that, you know, you'd be able to go out and get an education, go out and get a job and, and come back and, and be productive within your own community. You know, we're not just, uh, you know, get the diploma and kind of see what happens after that. We're really active in, in helping the students pursue, you know, their life's dreams and goals. Tamiya Gachapin is a middle child of a single mom who is a custodian and coaches school sports. Tamiya plays a big role at home and for her extended family. She helps with homework, babysitting, cooking, and checking in on her elders. When we first meet her, she's a few days away from graduating from Walatoa. Thanks to a number of dual credit options, she only took two classes as a senior and she finished the year early. She shared with us that she started to pull away from her classmates this year to focus on school and college scholarships. And although she's undecided about where she will go, she'll be the first member of her immediate family to pursue higher ed. College to me has always been one of my goals. My family, they really push education because they want to see all of us succeed. Like right now, like most of my cousins are starting out college or either graduating college. They're just happy that we're not giving up on school. Across Highway 4 from Wallatoa Charter is Hamas Valley High, a regular district run 9 through 12 school which serves about 90 students, 70% of whom are native. Here, close to three quarters of the students qualify for free or reduced lunch. Test scores are also poor, and the school's graduation rate is 60%. That's about on par with the state average for Native students. When I first got here, everybody was quite critical of the fact that, Mayhawk, we don't want our kids to leave here. We were encouraging kids, think about college, go to school, get out of the valley. You can always come back to the valley, but then you've got an experience to provide the valley with. It's not all about academics. It's about knowing your student. 
in a very personal way. They learn to build trust with you and you build trust with them. But at the same time, you're their teacher or you're, you know, you're their person that they are gonna look up to and learn from. And there has to be a mutual respect. Justin Maddalena lives with his younger sister, his parents, and his paternal grandmother. And his mother works at Hamas Valley High. He wouldn't be the first college goer in his family. And he has spent time away from home, participating in a leadership program. Justin is a competitive, meddling, long distance runner. He's an animator and he wants to go to college with a strong arts program. He also hasn't made his decision yet about where he wants to go, but he's narrowed it down to a few choices. To go to university and all the work that I've done makes me feel like happy, excited, also like nervous. This is it, this is my senior year. It's off to going to college, like a new chapter. We started this project eager to explore college-going success from the perspective of a rural community with all of the struggles and challenges that rural districts across the country face every day. In the next two chapters, Tamia and Justin will say goodbye to their friends, their schools, and finally, their families. We'll learn how they are coping with some big decisions and how prepared they and their families feel they are for their next steps. We hope you'll follow along.